Welcome to a new vlog. Those who have been with me since the beginning of this channel may know the first video I ever released, vlog number one, was a review of a switch mode bench power supply from Gopher. It was the CPS 3205C and uh, it was this great little unit. It has served me well over the years and I still have it. At that time I complained about the fact that the unit has the uh, output jacks on the back uh, which is not really convenient for bench use. There were also other issues mentioned while measuring the performance of the power supply in that video and I will link it on screen right now if you want to watch it but the uh, audio and the editing quality are lower than what you are seeing today. Gopher made some improvements to the original design and have now released a newer version of that power supply. It has a new model number, it's uh, NPS 1601, but it's the same model, basically 0 to 32 volts and 0 to 5 amps. It, it's, it's exactly the same enclosure, the same form factor. And there are other models with different ranges, but this is what would correspond to the CPS 3205 I reviewed years ago. They made a bunch of changes to the front panel and the most important one is they moved the output jacks to the front panel. So now it's easier to connect to the output of this power supply but they are still not standard uh, spacing between the uh, jacks so you wouldn't be able to connect these integrated banana jacks. They have redesigned the front panel completely. Uh, it's still using the seven segment uh, LED displays but now they also have this uh, wattage display which can be switched on temporarily in place of the amps display. You press the watts button and it will uh, show watts measurement for about three seconds before reverting to the amps display and all of that is indicated by the LEDs on the side. The switch for um, amps or volts adjustment is now tactile instead of a uh, sliding switch but the rest has stayed the same. I like the redesigned front panel, I just wish they uh, used a uh, lighter color for the text because for example there are some markings which are barely visible, uh, especially this uh, blue on gray background. A small user manual was shipped with the power supply but it only contains a few instructions on how to operate the power supply. There is no mention of the specifications of this power supply and I would have liked to see some specs in the user manual. However, I did find a list of specs online so here they are. Front panel accuracy is better than 0.1% peak to peak noise better than 10 millivolts, transient response for 50 to 100% rated load in less than one millisecond. These are pretty good specs on paper but let's see how this performs in practice. Let's measure some of this stuff first without running any calibration on the unit just with the factory settings. First let's measure accuracy of the front panel voltmeter and ammeter. And I will be using my Agilent 3441A 6.5 digit multimeter for this measurement and uh, we'll take a few points of measurements for both voltage and current uh, but I will just present you with the results because it's boring to watch me take all of these uh, measurements. And here are the uh, results I got. We can see on the voltage measurement the onboard voltmeter performs excellently. It only showed one least significant digit of error which can be discarded because the specs says 0.1% uh, plus or minus two digits. For the current measurement things are looking good up to one amp. Uh, only a couple of least significant digits uh, which can be discarded because of the specs which is uh, plus or minus three digits. However above one amp we start seeing some deviation. We go over the spec of 0.1% in some places but not by much. Personally I don't mind a 10 milliamps error when I'm talking about three amps especially in the price range of this power supply unit. So things have definitely improved over the previous versions because the measurements are more accurate now and it's really important that they're accurate up to one amp because uh, that's the range where the errors matter the most and that's the range that I will be using the most. Regarding the update speed of the front panel I don't think it has changed. It is still about two or three updates per second as it can be seen here in the sample video and I think that's a decent value for a power supply front panel. 
Next, I would like to check things like voltage or current overshoot as well as the output noise level and we need the oscilloscope for these measurements. As you can see, I am measuring right at the output of the power supply on the output terminals. So let's start by measuring if there is any voltage overshoot. Uh, we can imagine we have left a circuit connected to this power supply. We uh, forgot about it and we are now turning on power to the power supply. We are interested in knowing if the voltage will go straight to the set value or if there is any overshoot that could potentially damage our circuit. First, let's try this with the soft on-off button on the front panel. I don't expect the power supply to overshoot in this case because the unit is already regulating the voltage inside, so it will just enable the output on. The scope is using a, a times one probe DC coupling. I'm triggering on the rising edge. There is no load on the power supply. And yeah, there is uh, no overshoot. Uh, for the soft on off function and we have a pretty clean trace uh, which goes straight to 5 volts. Now I want to try the same measurement but with the rocker switch on the back of the unit uh, to turn it on. And we don't get any overshoot. There is just a strange transient, this very short signal which lasts less than a few microseconds. I don't know what's causing this, but given the short duration and attenuated level, I don't think it's gonna cause any trouble. The main thing here is that we do not have any overshoot that could potentially damage a sensitive circuit connected to the output of the power supply. I want to repeat this test with a uh, 4 ohm load connected on the output, the same voltage, 5 volts. That should be 1.25 amps going out of the power supply. So the first I'm gonna test is the soft on off switch and we have the same clean response. No overshoot uh, can be seen on this trace. And once again with the hard switch on the back and the load on the output we get the same result. There is no overshoot. Now let's also check for overshoot in constant current mode because so far we have been in constant voltage mode. But now the power supply is set to 0.5 amps limit and we know our resistor will take 1.25 amps. And turning the power supply on uh, it goes into constant current mode with no overshoot. That is very nice, the old model had some issues here, but it seems the new one is performing as it should. Just a quick mention, for all of these uh, tests, I have configured the power supply to have the output uh, turned on at power on. However, you can also configure it to have the output turned off by default at power on and that is the safe thing to do. That's how I keep my power supplies configured. You just have to keep the uh, on off button pressed for more than three seconds and then you'll see a message displayed here which is D off or D on uh, which corresponds if the power supply will automatically turn on uh, or not at power up. Next I would like to check if there is any current overshoot and you can imagine having the power supply set for a certain current limit same as before you forget about the circuit connected to the output and you turn on the power supply. Will it limit to the set current or will there be a current overshoot for a brief moment? And for this measurement I will be using my joule scope. It's the uh, perfect tool for this job because it can measure both very low and very high currents in the same measurement window. You can watch vol log 211 for a review of this tool. Uh, so the output of my power supply will go through the uh, joule scope and on the output of the joule scope I will have the same uh, 4 ohm resistor as a load. Power supply is set to 5 volts with uh, 0.5 amps current limit and as we turn it on it does not overshoot. Next let's try the hard switch on the back of the power supply and we get the same result there is no overshoot. If we zoom in we do see this small step present in our waveform, but that's too small to cause any issues. Another scenario is when you suddenly connect the load on the output of a power supply set to constant current mode. A current overshoot is to be expected in this case because of the capacitors placed on the output of the power supply. Even if the power supply regulation kicks in, you still have the energy stored in the output capacitor 
that is going to discharge into your load. Depending on the amount of capacitance on the uh, power supply output, the overshoot will be higher or lower. In this case, we know this power supply has a lot of capacitance on the output, so let's check our wa waveform. I will be connecting this crocodile clip uh, to the uh, load, so please ignore the bouncing that we'll see on the waveform, consider just the overshoot. The power supply was set to a limit of 0.5 amps, but we can see the overshoot reached 1.1 amps and it took about 40 milliseconds to get back to 0.5 amps. Unfortunately, this issue cannot be fixed as long as we have those big capacitors on the output of the power supply and sure, they need those capacitors to keep the noise down uh, considering this is a switch mode power supply. A workaround for this issue is to uh, start with a uh, lower voltage and uh, connect the load as the voltage is very low. This way you avoid the large current spike being applied to a potentially sensitive circuit like an LED which might get damaged with such a large current. Next, we need to check the output noise or voltage ripple in a peak-to-peak -peak level as well as RMS level measurement. For that, I'm going to use the oscilloscope in peak detect mode, AC coupled, times one probe, bandwidth limit on. So here is our base measurement with the power supply turned off. It's 1.2 millivolts peak to peak. I'm going to use this short connection to ground to avoid picking up common mode noise. And also I'm going to unplug all of the lights I have around the bench because those usually inject some noise into my test setup. First, we're going to measure with no load a few voltage levels. We have 5 volts, 10 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, 25 volts and 30 volts. And I will just show you the results of uh, these measurements on screen. It seems that for 5 volts output with no load, we are seeing about 10, 12 millivolts peak to peak noise, while the other measurements show below 10 millivolts. But of course, these no load measurements are not very relevant. So I also measured that 5 volts output in 0.5 amps increments, and the noise stayed around 8 millivolts peak to peak, even for the full rated 5 amps output. I've also measured a few higher voltages like 10, 20 and 30 volts and once again it stayed under 10 millivolts peak to peak and I consider this to be good performance for a switch mode power supply. You can power almost anything with this kind of noise level. And I dare you to measure the noise level on your Ruideng or whatever other Asian brand of power supply you have at home and let me know in the comments below what you're getting at 30 volts 5 amps output or even less, let's say 5 volts 5 amps output. I'm pretty sure you won't be getting 10 millivolts. I think we're done with the measurements on this power supply. So now all that's left to do is a teardown of the unit. So let's get started by removing these screws. So now with the screws removed, we should be able to slide this bottom cover off. And we're inside the power supply and I can already see some changes inside here. Like the uh, design of the main PCB takes up less, less space inside the enclosure and the front panel is now a two PCB construction. And don't forget for high resolution images from this teardown, check out the blog post on volog.com. And let's start with the mains input back panel. We can see they have a small board holding the fuse, but there is no socket for easy replacement. And I wonder why bother with this PCB if you're not going to place a socket for easy replacement of the fuse. Then we have exposed soldered wires going to the main board, I think, Heat shrink is pretty inexpensive and in this type of metallic enclosure I would love to see these wires and connections isolated with some heat shrink. Ground wire goes to the main PCB and is then tapped for grounding the enclosure via this tab with a screw and locking washer. We have a switch for input voltage selection and that seems to connect the mains input to a different tap on the transformer depending on the selection. In terms of protection we have a fuse but they haven't marked the rating on the board or the enclosure. It's probably stamped on the fuse but I could not see that without removing it. Next we have an NTC and MOV combo on the input, an X rated capacitor followed by a couple of Y rated capacitors to ground. A common mode choke for filtering and then 
we go into our bridge rectifier. We do not have any active power factor correction circuit on this model, so I'm not sure they will be able to legally sell these in the EU unless they have a second version with power factor correction circuit. At least that was the case with the previous model, they had two versions. The main controller chip is still the TL494, we have a couple of uh, STF13NK50, these are 11 amps rated MOSFET next to the bridge rectifier. And on the output we have a couple of ER1600CT, these are 16 amps rated dual shot key diodes. Next to the output we have an LM358 dual op-amp here, and given the proximity to the shunt resistor it might be conditioning that signal. A TNY286 is uh, handling the auxiliary power supply used to power the control circuit of this whole system. The transformers and inductors look to be of decent quality, at least from the outside it looks like it has decent copper in there and it has the required insulation. There is a secondary earth tap next to the output which connects to the output negative through a couple of capacitors. And surprise, this time we have no components on the back side. We can see the separation between the high voltage and low voltage side, at least on the back side it's a good separation. I can't inspect the top side easily because it's mostly covered by the transformers. Oh, and the soldering is top quality with no nasty flux residue left behind. The front panel is now constructed from two PCBs sandwiched together and connected with some pin headers. So it has been redesigned mechanically, but electrically I think it's pretty similar. They are using the same microcontroller, the STM8S105K4, and the same dual op-amp LM358. On the output jacks we have a small PCB with a 470 microfarad 35 volts rated capacitor made by Samsung, plus a smaller ceramic capacitor. I would say the margin is pretty tight on the voltage rating because this power supply can go up to 32 volts, but this is not all of the capacitance we have on the output, there is another 470 microfarad capacitor on the main board. So this is what's causing that current overshoot we were seeing earlier, but uh, to be fair they have lowered the value of the output capacitance. The CPS3205, the previous model, had something like 1600 microfarads total on the output, while this one uh, has almost half of that, so they are making progress and listening to customer feedback. Overall, I would say Gopher has massively improved the quality of their assembly process. The power supply looks really nice inside, but there are still some things I wish they would address, like an easy replaceable uh, fuse and heat shrink around the mains wiring. Also, I think it wouldn't hurt them to add some insulation to the uh, bottom of this uh, enclosure because the PCB is sitting just millimeters away from the metallic enclosure. A sheet of insulation material shouldn't cost that much and it would improve the safety of this power supply. I will make sure to send this feedback to Gopher and hopefully they will fix these things in a future revision. Should you buy this power supply? Well, if you need a bench power supply, definitely yes. Currently you can get this power supply from AliExpress for about $60 shipped and I think that's good value for money. I don't think you can get a power supply with better performance for the same money and it's also in a convenient small form factor. You can stack two or three of these easily. They are also reliable. I've been using the first one I got for the past five years and it's still working fine. I think this newer model will be even more reliable given how nice the soldering looks inside the enclosure. As usual, you'll find links to places where you can get this power supply in the description below the video and I would appreciate your feedback in the comment section. Don't forget you can support this channel on Patreon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.